everybody, it's Jenna from Jenna Stitches. Today we will be doing a tutorial on this hat pattern right here. Um, this is going to be my first tutorial, so I'm going to try my best to do as good as I can. So if there is anything that I missed or you think I could have done better, please let me know down below in the comments. I would really appreciate that for future. Um, and this yarn specifically is probably not the best to show the pattern um, because it doesn't stand out as much, but there is a row of some bobble-ish type stitches and there is a section of this uh, special stitch that I really don't have a name for. And then the rest of it is just basic stitches. So um, I will go into detail on how to do the bobble-ish stitch row and the special stitch here. The rest of it is just basic um, stitches. So yeah. I don't know what else to say. Also, um, I don't have a name for this hat and I have tried and tried to think of one and I can't. So if anybody is very creative and wants to name this hat, go ahead and leave some suggestions down below in the comments. Maybe one of you can name the pattern here. Um, but this hat will be made with two different size hooks. We will make the brim of the hat here with a U.S. H, which is a five millimeter, and then when we get into the body of the hat, we will switch to a US size I, which is a 5.5. And with this hat, I would suggest using a medium number four, but honestly, you can use any type of yarn that you would like. You would just have to adjust your stitches to make it the size you want. I am actually going to use a bulky number five, but this is a paint box chunky and honestly it is a medium number four it is a thicker medium number four but um that is a very 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 thin number five so this is what i'm going to use but um every hat i've made so far in this pattern has been made out of a medium number four so that is what i suggest with those hook sizes too again i'm only using this because it is so close to a four um and this is 100% acrylic yarn. Um, it's 149 yards, which should be right around enough to make the hat. Um, I've made several of them so far, and it seems to be right around 130 to 140 yards. Now, I can't find the center of the yarn, so I'm just going to pull from the outside if I can even find that. There is no end. There it is. It was tucked inside the ball. Um, now, I am going to be making a child size because if you've watched my previous videos, I have been donating hats or will be donating hats to um, the local school here uh, to give to my mom for Christmas. So I'm going to be making it in child size. Um, I will explain how to make it in adult size too, though. Um, so we'll just start with a slip knot. And if you're not familiar with that, then you, you might want to watch some other videos before you watch the tutorial because I'm not going to go into too much detail on how to make our normal everyday stitches. Um, but to make a slip knot, you, I just wrap it around my finger like that, pull the loop off, hold it here, take the working yarn and put it through that hole and pull. And then I'm going to take my H hook and put that on and tighten it up and then we're going to start by chaining nine so one two three four five six seven eight and nine and then we're going to single crochet across the chain till we get to the last stitch and we need eight so you can either just start from that first, or I'm sorry, last chain we just made, or you can count up from the very first chain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we will insert our hook and make a single crochet. And you'll just do that all the way across. Yeah. 
and there is the last one so there is our eight single crochets I'm going to chain one and turn uh, now with every row here after making the brim you're gonna work in the back loop only so if you turn and look at the top of your work you can see there's little V's you're gonna put your hook in between the V's and just grab that back loop and make some single crochets so we'll do that all the way across a single crochet in the back loop only and keep in mind we we, we need eight single crochets and there is number eight sometimes the first and the last stitch are kind of hard to get into and now we have two rows of the brim now what i do here and this is just a tip something you could do too um, since we do need quite a few rows to make our brim i mark this row here and you can see it makes a little ridge when you do that back loop only that indicates to me that I have two rows. So I'm going to place a stitch marker within that ridge. So I know this side, every time I have a ridge, I will have two more rows. So I'm going to chain one and turn. And we will do the same thing again. Work in the back loop only all the way across. And this will also create a ridge, but it creates a ridge on the opposite side. So, I know that it is row number three, but it's a little bit harder to keep track of your count that way. So, if you look at the front side, I still only have that one ridge for row number two. The second ridge is on the back. So now I know I have three We'll chain one, turn our work, eight single crochets in back loop only. Five, six, seven, and there is number eight. And now you can see I have two ridges. So I keep the stitch marker on this side so I know that every ridge I see is a two rows. And it just helps me keep track of how many rows I have all together. That way in the end I can just count by twos instead of counting every single little row here. And sometimes with the ridges it gets kind of difficult to count them. What you could also do too is if you see a ridge on the front that is a row. The dip in between the two is a row. The next one is a row. You can count it that way too. I've just found placing a stitch marker on the front side makes it so much easier for me. So I now have four rows. I'm going to continue on doing chain one, eight single crochet in the back loop only for 50 rows. That is how many I need to make the child size. Um, if you are making this adult size, I would go with 60 to 65 rows. And also, if you're making it for yourself, the best bet is to just take it off your hook and put it around your head and see if it fits. Um, I did make one adult size that needed 70 rows, um, so it all just does depend on the person's head. But standard for child size, I do 50 rows, and then for adult, I do 60 to 70. I'm sorry, 65 to 70. So we'll do one more row together, chain one, and then we will go eight single crochets in that back loop only. There is six, seven, and number eight. Chain one and turn our work. So when I get done with this row, I'll have another ridge, which means I have six rows. So I'm going to go ahead and have you guys pause the video here. Go ahead and make however many rows you need for the size you're making. Again, I make a child size, so I'm going to do 50 rows. If 
you're doing a doll, I would suggest 65 to 70, and I will meet you back up when I'm done with my brim. Okay, everybody, so now that we have finished the brim of our hat, we are going to go ahead and switch to our eye hook, fold the two sides together, and slip stitch along the sides of the brim so that we can close it up and actually make it circular. So go ahead and slip into those eight stitches we just made. The side with the chain on it can get a little bit difficult to do so. Um, once I do the first one, I turn it just because it's easier for me to do it that way. And then just make sure you're slip stitching into all eight so we have a nice even join of our hat. Oops, sorry. I'll have to, I'm going to take the stitch marker off so it's not in my way. And I'll have to get used to like setting up the tripod for these tutorials because every time I stop, I end up moving it a little bit. And then when I go to record again, I end up bumping it. And I notice you can't see it as much as I thought you could when you're actually watching the tutorial, but... Every time I hit it, I'm going to apologize, and you guys are probably going to be like, what are you apologizing for? You can't even tell. But it's like I got one more here. So now my brim is slip stitched closed, and I'm going to go ahead and turn it so that the seam of the brim is on the inside, and we will be working on the outside of the hat. So now that we have done that, we do need to create our first round. Wow, I couldn't think of the word of the hat. And we'll start by chaining one and we're going to half double crochet all the way around. So you want to start at the seam and go around and then meet back up at the seam to complete the whole entire round. And what I say is to... Um, half double crochet evenly around and usually however many rows you made for your brim remember I made 50 is how many stitches you want around the brim of the hat because sometimes it is kind of hard to figure out where those stitches are I do apologize I had to take a drink <clears throat> so if you kind of look at it I'm gonna put my very first stitch in that hole right there and then this ridge is technically two different rows so you kind of want to split it with your hook and make a stitch there again it's kind of hard to see unless you're at this spot right here where that middle one will go so I'm gonna yarn over and insert into this stitch and make a half double crochet and then I try to look for somewhere to insert my hook. Like I have a, a little bit of a hole here. So it is going to push through pretty easily. And now I can go into the larger stitch right there. Now I'm back to where my two rows are. I just kind of push through and make a stitch. On the inside it kind of looks a little bit rough but on the outside you can't tell. So you just want however many stitches for the length of your brim. Again, I did 50, so I'm going to do 50 evenly around the brim of the hat. If you did the 65 to 70 for an adult size, then you want to do the same for however many half double crochets around the hat you need. And if you are having trouble like figuring out where to put the stitches, it is okay. Just try to keep it as even as possible. Um, what you could do too if you're um, new to making hats this way is fold it in half and mark what you think the middle stitch is. So if I were to fold it in half with my brim, this would be about halfway point. I could put a stitch marker there and then know that I need 25 here and then 25 here instead of having to make sure um, 
that I have 50 by the time I get back over here. Because that's what I used to do. And I would realize, like, right about here, oh, I need 15 more stitches still. And they're going to be way too jammed. So I'd have to go ahead and frog all of it and figure it out. But um, if you fold it in half and place the stitch marker, you don't really have to worry about frogging a whole lot of stitches. So just work your way around the brim of your hat, making those half double crochets. Um, I have noticed with this yarn that I'm using, there's a pretty uh, defined stitch in between my two rows. So I can place it right in there, but um, depending on the yarn you use and the stitch definition of that yarn, you might have to, you know, kind of just play with your hook to get that stitch in between those two rows. So go ahead and work your way all the way around. Um, pause the video and I will meet you back up when I'm done with this row. Okay, so I just made my last half double crochet in the third loop only. Just like before, I am going to go into the very first stitch of this round and make a slip stitch and chain one. So now we have that row complete for the next row. We are going to start with a treble crochet. So we will yarn over our hook twice and we're going to go into that very first stitch right next to our chain one, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. There is a treble crochet or a triple. And then in the next stitch next to that, we are going to do just a single crochet. And it kind of creates this bobble type stitch. So because we're putting a single crochet next to a triple crochet, it causes the triple crochet to be condensed and stick out. So we are going to do that all the way around, alternating between a triple and a single. And again, to do a triple you want to yarn over your hook twice, go into the stitch, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Next stitch is going to be a single crochet. And then we are going to yarn over twice, go into the stitch, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two and single crochet, triple crochet, and single crochet, triple crochet, yarn over twice, go into the stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, single crochet, triple crochet, and single crochet. And one more time, we will do our triple, and then our single. So now you can see that it creates a bobble type stitch with the triple crochets. Depending on the yarn, I have noticed that sometimes the triple crochets won't stick out too far. So you can always go behind them and kind of push them out with your finger um, like a poppet. So if it's like that, you can see that one's not sticking out. It's sticking out in the back instead. Just push it and it will pop up. Um, this yarn actually gives this row a very good definition. Uh, so you'll just continue that all the way around, doing your treble or triple, whatever you like to call it, single, triple, single, triple, single, until you get back to the beginning. And then, like every other round, we're going to slip stitch into the first stitch. So I will meet you back up at the end of this round. Okay, so I just finished the last single crochet, and like I said, we are going to slip stitch into the first stitch. And that first stitch is kind of large here because it is on top of that treble crochet. So just make sure you grab both the front and back loop and pull through to make your slip stitch and chain one. And now we're kind of going to repeat what we did down here. So we're going to make a row of just half double crochet only. And then after that, we will make another row of our third loop only. 
So just make sure you're going into every stitch to do your half double crochet. And the trebles have a very long stitch. So that is one full stitch right there. And then I'll make sure I go into my single. And again, you can just keep track of your stitches across to make sure that you have your 50 or however many rows you made. Or stitches, you know what I mean. Maybe. Sometimes I don't know what I mean. So we're just going to do simple half double crochets all the way around. Just like we did at the very beginning. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and have you guys pause and meet me back up at the end. I don't think you really need to sit here and watch me make some half double crochets, so I'll see you in just a second. Okay, I have one more half double crochet to do here. And I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch into the first. We will do that every single round. Do our chain one. And as I said, we are going to do another row of our third loop only so we're going to yarn over turn our work grab that back loop and make our half double crochets turn our work grab that third loop I'm really close to my tripod right now so again I'm sorry if I hit it grab that third loop There's that. And what I like to do, and you'll probably see this in the next hat tutorial I do too, because I have another pattern that I want to get the tutorial made for. I like to kind of use the third loop rows, rounds, whatever you want to call them, as a uh, an outline or a breaking point in between different types of stitches, if that makes any sense. So with this hat, what you'll do is we have our section. There we go, that's the word I was looking for, to break up the sections. So we have our section that is the treble and single or triple, whatever you call it. And then we have a half double crochet row, a third loop only row, and it's gonna create this border around the trebles and singles, as you can see what we've already done here. Now the section above this is going to be a different type of stitch. So it's going to have the border, the different type of stitch, and then we're going to do another row of half doubles and then half double in the third loop only to kind of outline that section as well. And then we do another section of this the same exact way. So each different type of stitch section kind of has this third loop only border to it if that makes any sense once we get further into the hat and get to that point I will kind of explain it again so we can see it visually instead of just trying to explain it but I like how it kind of borders each section We're just going to continue around in that third loop only. And you can see I'm not even looking at the stitches anymore. Uh, once you kind of get into the hang of it, you, you don't even have to look for that third loop anymore. You just know to go behind your normal stitch and that third loop will be there. Okay, I will meet you back up at the end of this round and we'll go on to the next. Okay, so we just finished the row of the third loop only. I already did my slip stitch and I'm going to chain one just like we've been doing for the rest of the hat. And this is now going to be the special stitch section. Um, I don't really have a name for this stitch. Um, I've seen it other places, but I don't really think it has a name. Um, if anybody's familiar with it and knows what the name is, definitely let me know down below. 
um, but I just call it the special stitch because again I don't know what the name of it is and this stitch does tend to be a little bit tighter than the rest of the stitches in the hat um, and you might notice your hat go from straight to curving in and then we when we go back to the next section it will go out again um, if that bothers you, you can go up to a K hook. Um, remember, we are using an I, 5.5. I meant to say J, not K. <laughs> so a J 6 millimeter hook if um, that little indent, I guess, as you could call it, bothers you. Um, it really isn't going to matter once the hat is on somebody's head. And it won't be too noticeable. Um, but if it does bother you, you can definitely go up a hook size for this section. But the stitch does tend to not have much stretch to it, so it does tend to make the hat like bow in a little bit. Um, but after you do the chain one, we are going to go back into the same stitch that the chain one is in and pull up a loop. We are going to go into the next stitch and pull up a loop. Now we have three loops on our hook. We are going to yarn over and pull through one. Yarn over, pull through all three chain one and that is how you do this stitch so we will repeat that all the way around we'll go into the next stitch and pull up a loop go into the stitch next to that pull up a loop yarn over pull through one yarn over pull through all three chain one again we will go into the stitch pull up a loop go into the next stitch pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through all three, chain one. Go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, stitch next to that, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through all three, chain one. Go into your stitch, pull up a loop, go into the next one, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through all three, chain one. We'll do that a couple more times before I let you go on your own. We will go into the next stitch and pull up a loop. Go into the stitch after that, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through all three, chain one. One more time, we'll go into the stitch and pull up a loop. Go into the following stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over pull through all three chain one and we are going to repeat that all the way around the hat until we get back to our starting point so go ahead and pause the video and finish up the row and i'll meet you back at the beginning okay so i just finished my round and as always we are going to slip stitch into the first stitch so much like our treble crochet stitches down here where the first stitch is kind of elongated so is this one so this big stitch right here is where we are going to slip stitch into and do our chain one, just like we've been doing for the rest of the hat. Now we are going to repeat this stitch for three more rows. So we want four of these stitches rows in total, um, but this row and the two following rows after are done a little bit different than what we just did. So, <coughs> oh, sorry. You will still do the same concept for the stitch where we're going to go in, pull up a loop, go into the next one, pull up a loop, pull through one, pull through all three. But you're going to go into the little holes created here, which technically are the stitch, but we're going to skip right over those chain ones we did in the middle. So for the first stitch, we're going to go into this hole created right here, pull up a loop. We're going to skip right over the stitch and go into the next one right here, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through all three, chain one. Then we're going to go back into that same stitch we just came out of to make the next one. So we'll go in and pull up a loop, skip over the stitch, go into the next hole created there, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through all three, chain one. Same thing, same stitch we just came out of, we're going to go back into and pull up a loop. Skip over the stitch, go into the next one, pull up a loop, pull through one, pull through all three, chain one. Go into the stitch, pull up a loop, 
skip over the stitch, go in here, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through all three, chain one, go back into that, pull up a loop, skip over the stitch, go into the next, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through all three, chain one. one a couple more times here go in here skip over go in here pull up a loop pull through all three chain one and i'll do it one more time for you guys pull up a loop pull up a loop pull through one pull through all three chain one so this row that we're doing right now go ahead and continue on doing the same thing so the next stitch will start here you're going to pull up your loop skip over here go into this one pull up your loop pull through one pull through all three chain one you're going to continue that all the way around once you get back to the starting point slip stitch into the first stitch chain one and do this again two more times so we want four rows of this all together this row continues on as I was just showing you. So does the row above it and the row above that. So I'm going to have you guys pause the video here, go ahead and complete this row and do it two more times. And I will meet you back up when we are finished with that. Okay, so I have finished my four rows of the special stitch. And as you can see, mine does kind of veer in a little bit, not too much, um, definitely not too bad with this yarn that I'm using. The other hat, which I don't know where it went, that I made, that I showed in the beginning, um, really bowed in a lot, but this one didn't do too bad at all. And I know the first one I made, which was made out of Ice Cream's Roving Divinations, um, that one really didn't at all either. So really depends on what yarn you use. But again, once it's on the head, you're not even going to be able to notice it. So it's not that big of a deal. So now that we have our four rows of the special stitch, we are pretty much just going to repeat what we've already done. So the next row, we're going to want to slip stitch if you have not yet and do your chain one. And we're going to half double crochet all the way around. And keep in mind that you do have slip stitches in between these. They are not slip stitches, sorry. Um, chain ones in between these stitches. If you can't get into them, I just double up. Um, my chain ones are always way too tight. So I'm just gonna put two half double crochets in every space all the way around. So the first one I only did one, then I skipped over the stitch and did two in this space. I'm gonna skip over the stitch and do two in this space. If you can get into your chain ones, then you can just do every stitch around. Mine are way too tight, so I'm just going to skip over and do two in each of these spaces that show up in between that special stitch. So whatever works for you, either way, you're going to have the same look in the end. Um, doing it this way is gonna look no different than if I were able to get into those uh, chain ones at the top of each stitch. But anytime I have to close a stitch with a chain one, it, I, it's almost impossible for me to get back into it. Even if I consciously know, like I have to go back into that stitch later, let me make it as loose as I can, it's still tight, so. Um, if you can't, just do what I'm doing and put two half doubles in every space between the special stitch and that will get us back up to our stitch count we had earlier kind of forgot what i was trying to say there oops and I'm just going to work this row all the way around before we start the next one. So just go ahead and follow along making these half double crochets. Okay. 
I haven't even been making sure that I'm in frame. So hopefully I have been. Yeah, I, again, it's my first tutorial, so I'm sure there's going to be mistakes and you guys are going to let me know in the comments things that I can do to improve for my next one. Um, but I completely forgot I was even like crocheting on camera. So hopefully I was in frame enough for all of that. It looks like I am, but so I got my last little space here between the stitches to put my two half doubles in. I'm going to slip stitch into the first one like we've been doing the whole hat. Chain one. Now we're going to repeat the back loop, or not the back loop, the third loop only. And we are actually getting close to the top of the hat, which, I mean, it's getting to that size, so that is good. So we will do half double crochets in the third loop only all the way around here. And I actually can't see my third loop. There it is. So even when you're familiar with a stitch, sometimes it is hard to get into that first one. You just kind of got to take your time and look for it. Um, but remember with this, you're going to turn your work a little bit and get into that loop that's behind our normal crochet that we would go into. So there is our normal V stitch we would grab both loops for. Instead of doing that, we are going to turn towards the back a little bit, grab the loop behind, and perform our half double crochets back here just like we did twice before in our rows earlier. And we will do this all the way around. is getting stuck on something I'm having a heart I think it's there we go that's better I think it was just stuck under my arm because it fell on the floor <coughs> sorry again about that I'm gonna Hopefully that works because Okay, hold on one second. I can't work with it on the floor. It keeps getting stuck on everything. So let me pick it back up and get it back on the desk here. We'll just continue working our third loop onlys here. And as you guys can see, I'm not even, you know, pulling the hat back at all to look behind it anymore. I just, because I do this stitch so much, know where to put my hook. Just like when you're getting used to regular crocheting, you know, the first time you do a single crochet even is very awkward. So the first time doing a third loop is going to be a little awkward for you. But once you do it enough, you don't even really have to look anymore. Okay, so I'm almost around back at the beginning here. almost done we got a couple more things to do with the hat and it will be done so um I forgot to mention earlier too and I do apologize for this um because I'm making a child size hat um following the same exact pattern I'm doing should be completely fine but if you make it and you realize that it might be a little too short um, which I have made child size and adults and had no problem with following this same exact pattern. But if you feel like your hat isn't tall enough or long enough, um, you can definitely make more of this section right here. We did four rows. You can make it five or six um, to make it a little bit longer. I guess I should have mentioned it back when we were working on that section. But again, I've made it in 
adult sizes and kept it to the same exact pattern and it's been completely fine. So I made it back around to the beginning. We now have our row of third loop only and now we're gonna repeat this one here. So remember with that one, as always, we're gonna chain one and then we're gonna start with a treble crochet or triple, whatever you like to call it, in the first stitch. And single crochet in the next, triple crochet. Single crochet in the next, triple crochet. Single crochet in the next, triple, single, triple, oops, don't do that, triple, single, triple, single. So as always, go ahead and continue that all the way around doing your triple, single, triple, single, and I will meet you back up at the end of this round. Okay, so I have made it back around my hat and I have slip stitched into the first stitch and I'm gonna make my chain one. And I am at the point of my hat where I'm okay with starting the de decreasing to close the hat off. Now, um, I know I mentioned, sorry, just a minute ago, if you wanna make your hat a little bit taller, you can just keep adding the special stitch in until you feel like it's tall enough. Um, what you also could do is after making the um, treble single row is do the same thing we did down here, making a half double crochet row and then a half double crochet in the third loop only. It kind of will encase the a uh, treble single row just like it does down here. You can do the same up here. Um, I'm not going to do that with mine. I think it's at a good spot to start the decreasing, but again, it will give you just a little bit more length if you want that in your hat to go ahead and do another row of half double crochet and then a row of half double crochet in the third loop only. Whatever works for you. And um, with my decreasing and this goes for any hat, to be quite honest. If the stitches don't match up perfectly in the end by the time you're done with that round, it's not really going to affect the hat as long as you stay in the same repeat all the way through and you don't try to decrease too much throughout the hat. So what I generally do is I start off by single crocheting, Actually, I'm going to double crochet, not double crochet, half double crochet um, in six stitches, and then I'm going to half double crochet decrease. It might not come out perfect in the end, but it's not going to affect the look of the hat at all. So I'm going to start off by doing six half double crochets. And there is six. And then I am going to do a half double crochet decrease. So I'm going to yarn over, go into my next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, go into my next stitch, pull up a loop, and then pull through all five. And then we'll do half, six half double crochets again. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then I will decrease by going into the stitch and pulling up a loop, yarning over, going into the next stitch, pulling up a loop, and then pulling through all five, back to six half double crochets, one, two, three, four, five, 
six, half double crochet, decrease, yarn over, go into the stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, go into the next, pull up a loop, pull through all five, six half double crochets. Sometimes the trebles are hard to get into too. One, two, three, four, five, six, half double crochet two together, one, two, three, four, five, six, half double crochet two together, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So mine actually worked out. I really don't know how because I didn't count that or anything first. I just kind of went with six and it worked out. But um, what I was trying to explain and what I've done previously on other hats is like um, I'll do 10 half double crochets and then double crochet two together. Um, and at the end, I might only have like three stitches left after doing a repeat. It's not going to matter as long as you're evenly decreasing throughout the brim or the circumference of the hat, it's going to look fine in the end. So if you do happen to do that, if you're making your own patterns or anything um, and you have a situation like that, it's, it's going to be fine in the end. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and do the same. We'll do half double crochets. We'll chain one, but I am going to decrease every fifth stitch. So we will do four half double crochets, three, four, and then I'm going to do half double crochet two together. We will go four half double crochets, two, three, four, half double crochet two together. One, two, three, four, half double crochet two together. There goes my yarn on the floor again. One, two, three, four. Two together, one, two, three, four, two together, one, two, three, four, two together, one, two, three, and here's what I was talking about, four, but I have another stitch here, so I'm just going to do these last two together and do a decrease and slip stitch into my first and like I said you can't tell like it doesn't look any different than the rest of the hat even though I didn't have enough stitches there to finish that repeat uh, so now we'll do another row here chain one and I'm going to decrease every third stitch so we will do two one, two, decrease. Do it again. One, two, and we will decrease. 
We'll do this all the way around. One, two, decrease. 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 And again, I'm only left with two, so I'm just going to go ahead and double crochet, half double crochet into both of those instead of doing another decrease since I just had one. And slip stitch into my first. Next row, we're going to chain one and we're going to decrease every other stitch. So the first stitch, we will do a half double crochet. Next stitch, we are going to decrease. one half double crochet, one decrease. One half double crochet, one decrease. One decrease. One Decrease one, decrease one, decrease one, and decrease, and we got. Two stitches left here, so I'm just going to do another decrease. And slip stitch into my first. So we only got a few more stitches here. Let me count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So I have an odd number. So I'm going to go ahead and do one half double crochet in the first, and then I'm going to decrease every stitch. Um, and if you are making the larger size, obviously you're not going to be quite there yet because um, you had more stitches than I did. So I would suggest doing one more round of um, one half double crochet, one decrease, one half double crochet, one decrease all the way around um, before you get to the row where you decrease every single stitch. But I am at that point where I'm just going to decrease every single stitch now. So there is one decrease. Here is two. Here is three. Four, five, six, seven, and the last one should be eight. And again, slip stitch into our first. And then my very, very last round here will be one more round of decreasing in every stitch. So that will take my eight stitches down. Ooh, I forgot I was doing half doubles. Mm 
And there we go. So that took my eight down to four. I now have a very small hole here. So I am actually going to pull my yarn up a little bit. Make quite the long tail. Probably enough to sew all that in. <coughs> Sorry. Grab one of my needles. And I'm going to slip through the yarn and pull that tight there. And then I'm just going to go in to each stitch. So there is one weaving through. Here's the second one. There's the third one going in from the back into the center of the hat. And pulling through and then you can go ahead and pull that and it completely closes up the top of the hat and since I am giving these away to the local school um, I have been putting pom-poms on all of them so obviously you don't have to if you don't want to But I am going to go ahead and put this on. And I know everybody likes to make their pom-poms detachable, especially for kids, because, you know, if you wash it, it fluffs up and everything. But I don't, so I just put them on the hat. So I thread through the bottom of the pom-pom, because even though there is an elastic on it, I don't like how loose they feel if you go through the elastic. So the first time I go through, I actually go through the pom-pom itself into the hat, come back out. And weave through that elastic loop a few times just to kind of get it stuck on there. I'll do it one more time here. And I know you can't really see what I'm doing because it's fluffy. But I just go through the hat and the elastic of the pom-pom a few times just to make sure it's secure. That pom-pom is on there Ooh, and it's not going anywhere. And then I'm gonna weave back into the hat with my tail, turn it inside out a little bit. Weave through some stitches in here, just to secure the tail down, make sure it's not gonna come out at all. And I really have no rhyme or reason when I do this, I kinda just go through a lot of stitches until I feel like it's not going to go anywhere. That feels good to me. I got a piece of my hair in there somehow. I'm going to cut that off. And turn it inside or right side out if I can. And it's done. So we have now completed the hat. Again, I don't have a name for it. I know I mentioned that at the beginning of the video. Um, if you have any creative names, definitely leave them down below in the comments. I would really appreciate it. And um, maybe one of you will get to name the hat. But I hope everybody enjoyed this. Again, please let me know if there's anything I can improve in the future. This was the f first tutorial I've ever done. I think it went pretty good besides me hitting the tripod every few minutes. But... Um, I feel like I did a really good job, but obviously if there is anything I can improve on, definitely let me know in the future. And if you do make the hat, please feel free to email me. My email is always in the description box below to show me what you've created. Um, and I look forward to seeing how you all interpret it. So thanks for watching and I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.